Hey everyone, welcome back to In the Studio with Ophelia. I'm Ophelia and thank you all so much for joining me today. Today's video is all around this guy. It is a Jerry's Jumbo Jet Black Pencil. And if you have ever watched my channel or watched me paint, I always use this guy for making the really dark marks. However, in a painting, when it's time to varnish it and such, this, if it's not properly sealed, will smudge. And today's video, we're gonna fix the smudge situation. So, I hope that you'll stick around to watch me fix this Jumbo Jet Black Pencil. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and definitely hit that notification bell and subscribe so that you are notified when I upload here on my channel. So I shall stop talking, flip the camera around, grab some finished paintings, and we shall get started. Thanks so much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I also want to pop back in to quickly apologize. As I was watching the footage, I realized my camera thing here that holds my camera, a tripod thing, I don't know, but what holds my camera in place, that thing, it shifted. And so the entire video is like this, and I'm very sorry. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you watching. Even though I'm usually a disaster, thank you for being here. Bye. In today's video, I wanted to talk us through everything that I will use to finish off a painting. As you guys know from watching my channel, I always use this Jerry's Jumbo Jet Black Pencil when I am doing um, paintings and such like that. This is an oil impregnated charcoal, which means I have to set it so that when I get ready to seal and varnish my painting, it won't smudge. the materials that I am going to be using. Of course, I've got my finished canvas here and this is a um, Creative Mark 8x8 um, and that's the edge. I like using these um, one and a half inch thick gallery wrapped canvases. So I've got this painting finished. I also have, because I work a lot in these little mini and these guys are the four by four creative mark gallery wrap uh inch and a half and i just love working on this size so i've got one of these that i wanted to show you something with i've got a variety of brushes and depending on the size of the painting for instance if i finished and i want to seal something that looks like this guy a four by four that's when my polar flows come in handy. Um, what you want when you're about to do your varnish is something that's a, a nice soft brush. Um, these polar flow brushes, I love these because they are just so versatile in being able to go from medium to medium and still maintain their softness. I gesso with these, I apply matte medium or glue with these, I have watercolor with these, I use acrylic paints with these, and then I can also apply my varnishes and vinyl coats and such like that. So I love using these guys for um, smaller size paintings. And then for my larger painting, so we'll, for instance, use this one with this um, eight by eight and larger. These are the Creative Mark and they're the mural. Um, they're white nylon brushes. It's the green one with the red handle that you want to 
um, get. And again, these are very, very, very soft bristle brushes um, that I use for my varnishing only. Um, and so this is what I would use for, and I think it also comes in a size 40 for largers, but um, eight by eights, 20 by 20s and such like that. I will usually use this size 30, and then I believe there's a size 40 that can be used for largers. As far as my mediums go, this is um, the final fix, and it's a Spectra fix that I like to use for um, making sure that my Jumbo Jet Black Pencil won't smear or smudge. I have it in one of these, um, it's the like a continuous spray bottle, so I will just pour it out of here into here um, to kind of mist over a canvas. And this does work very, very well with sealing this um, Jumbo Jet Black Pencil. And then I also will use, um, there's a couple of different things for forever. I would use, and this I found out in a workshop, it was taught by Joe DiGiulio in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, he calls it the recipe. So that's what's in this bottle. And it's literally Liquitex gloss medium, Liquitex matte medium. And when you mix the two together, it makes like a, a satin type finish. And so you would take like half the bottle of gloss, fill it half the way with gloss, fill it the other half with um, matte, and then they kind of mix in here and then you just fill it um, like a tiny bit of the way with water. I hope that makes sense. And then you kind of mix everything together and this would be the isolation coat before I moved into the final varnish, which is a satin varnish. I believe Liquitex now makes a satin medium to use for your isolation coat, but I have gallons of the matte medium and the gloss medium, so I continue to kind of mix them together in this to make my recipe. And last year, I think it was, I found this guy. It's the isolation coat. And this is by Golden, which will do exactly the same as these two guys here. Um, I kind of go between the two, depending on which is closer at hand. Um, this one is a bit more glossy, where I prefer more of a satin. But that part does not necessarily matter because I go over the entire thing with a satin. So it will knock the gloss back off of this. So it just honestly kind of depends on what I have um, close at hand. I've now taken this entire bottle and because I had a little bit of both left and just dumped everything in here. So this one is my satin mixture, which would usually be in here. So I also have, this is like a plastic muffin tin that I will pour my mediums into um, just because I usually don't like to go directly on the canvas. I just will pour it in here and um, then use the brush to go to the canvas. So let's go ahead and get started with how I will varnish a painting to finish it off. On this painting, right in these lighter areas, you can see where I've used my Jerry's Jumbo Jet Black Pencil. So the first thing that I will do once the entire painting is dry is I take my final fix and this I've just poured it in this bottle. I like this Spectra fix, even though there are other fixatives on the market, this one does not have a smell. Um, there are some in like aerosol cans um, that work beautifully, but there's a smell and I you know, would usually have to like take them outside, spray them and then come back upstairs to my studio. And I just started using this one because it's simpler. With this one, I 
I will usually just take from here, pour it into here. And I think they now sell this. Oops. They now sell this guy in either this spray formulation or a continuous spray. And I just kind of give a once over pass. Mainly concentrating on exactly where I've got the uh, fixative and I usually will spray it once, let it dry and it doesn't take very long to dry. And then I'll usually spray it again, depending on how heavily marked my canvas is. Um, and then I spray it, usually let it dry. Even though it dries pretty quickly, I will usually sit it for say 24 hours spray it again, let it sit for 24 hours, and then I continue with the next steps. This one is a painting that's finished. And I have um, done the final fix sealer. And now I want to get ready to actually start um, applying my isolation isolation coat um, it honestly does not matter which one you use for simplicity what I shall do is just use this guy and I usually in all honesty <laughs> I end up wasting a lot instead of trying to pour it back in um, because I always over pour and I'm going to use this larger brush and I just kind of get the brush um, soaked with my recipe and I'm gonna try to hold it. You'll notice I'm just gonna allow the brush to almost dance across the surface or glide across the surface um, and just put the product down. I'm not really pushing too hard. I'm just kind of letting the brush glide across the surface and I wanna see. So I'm just kind of letting it glide across the surface and putting the isolation coat down. What I will usually do is put one coat going in one direction. Oops, I missed some down here. Um, and then I will immediately go and rinse this brush out because I want it to maintain that softness that it has. Um, so I will immediately put the brush into, um, if possible, you would want to put it, like go to your sink and kind of wash it out. Um, I have like my bucket of water here even though I've kind of rinsed it out, I still wanna go ahead and um, wash it out with some of my brush soap. But, um, so immediately we'll wash that out. What I will end up doing is um, letting this first coat dry where I went this direction. And so I'll let it dry usually overnight. And then tomorrow I will sign it and then let that dry and then go the opposite direction with another coat of my mixture. I am going to go clean this brush out really quickly and I'll be right back. 
before I take off to wash my brush, I just wanted to show you um, a couple of options that I use to keep my brushes cleaned. This one is the Masters Brush Soap, um, and it's a brush cleaner and preserver, and it's literally like a big cake of soap. Um, I wish I were better at cleaning up my toys properly. Um, but this is what it looks like. I will go find a newer one to show you. One that's not so dirty. Um, before I go in with my white brush that I've used to uh, varnish, I will clean the blue paint off of that so that it won't stain and contaminate my brush. Another one that I use is this Mona Lisa and it's pink soap. It's a brush cleaner and I will just pour this in the bottom of an empty container and swirl my brush around in that to just make sure that it's clean. But both of these work very well. It just kind of, again, depends on um, what I have close at hand. Um, gosh, I've either, either one. <laughs> Just wanted to show you quickly for one second. Um, I've cleaned the brush and, you know, unfortunately I am not the greatest at taking care of my toys. However, with these brushes, because they are specific, I use these only to um, varnish or isolation coat my paintings. And what I want is to maintain that softness so that I'm not leaving behind uh, brush strokes. And so with all of these, and these two clearly I use um, to acrylic paint and such like that, but um, acrylic paint, watercolor, glue, all of the above, but I will wash them after I'm painting or when I'm varnishing because I want them to maintain that softness that I need when I'm applying my isolation coat or my varnish. I will usually just leave these to um, sit and dry on my counter or on my work table and I leave them flat. Um, and then I can of course put this away. The rest of this mixture will dry here in this pan and I can just peel it up and toss it and move on. I don't usually try to um, like pour it out and rinse it. I just let it dry in this muffin tin and just kind of peel it out and throw it away. Um, so I will be back once that um, painting has dried for 24 hours. I will be back once this painting has dried and I've signed it and applied another coat and then we'll be back for the final varnish. Okay, I've let this guy dry fully and then I went the opposite direction with more of my recipe mixture. And now I am going to put on a couple of coats of my uh, Liquitex. It's the satin varnish that I use and I pour it into this muffin pan. And again, I just usually do it that way so that I don't um, go directly on the canvas. And this one is pretty liquid. And so I just kind of soak the bristles of my brush. And in that very same manner, I kind of just let the brush glide over the surface. and kind of look to see if there are any spaces that I missed. And exactly the same 
as when I did the isolation coat. I will let this guy dry up for about 24 hours. Come back in with another coat of my varnish and we are done.